out. So if you just came into the room, you can just get started in a child's pose with a couple of blocks, a couple of books, a couple of pots out in front of you. And we're just breathing here, beginning to just stretch out the muscles through the back of the body, specifically the lats that allow you to actually draw your biceps in line with your ears. So if you're noticing it's really hard to get the head down, you're still a little tight through that area. So just a few more breaths. And then I'm gonna get you to actually start to take the palms of the hands together and start to draw the thumbs down toward the back of your neck. And as you do that, can you hug the upper arm bones in toward the sides of your head and feel your shoulder blades pull down and away from your ears? If you feel like as you're here for a few more breaths, you're not really feeling anything, you can start to take this into more of a puppy pose by starting to back your knees up a little bit more, getting the hips stacked on top of the knees, and then starting to same actions, but sink down from there. So we're just gonna be here for another eight. As much as you're sending the chest down and the hips back, can you still sort of pull in on the rib basket and feel that work move up into the shoulders instead? Just another three. It's two. Good, and then you slowly just start to lift the head a little bit, start to reach the hands forward in space. And then I start to bring my weight over on top so that I can root down through one hand and then through the other. You can, you can move these out of the way at this point. You're gonna come into all fours. And I'm gonna have you set the hands down, start to lean some weight forward past your wrist, press down through the fingertips. Make sure the heels of the hands are really firmly rooting down. You're pressing down through the fingertips as well. Low belly's lifting up. Chest is lifting up away from the floor. The space between the shoulder blades is really nice and broad. And then keep that action through the hands. Tuck your toes under and really like push through your hands to send weight back onto your heels as you stretch out the arches of your feet. Right there for three. Really thinking about pushing the heels toward the back of your mat for two. Good, and then you're gonna come forward into a tabletop again. You're going to puff up the space between the shoulder blades, hug the upper arm bones in, just like you did when you were on the pods or on the blocks. And then you're coming into a floating tabletop. So it's more like a Pilates bear sort of thing. You're going to breathe here for three. Pull both sides of the neck away from the shoulders for two. And then what you start to do here is lift the hips, take the forearms to the floor, and start to cycle back into your first dolphin. And I mean, this first one could be really bent through the knees. See where you can start to pull the ears back between the, the biceps while you think about hugging the upper arm bones in and sliding the forearms forward into the floor as well as toward one another. And then from there, you reverse out. So you start to take the knees down and then you're back up crouching tabletop for three. Lift in the chest, pull the low belly up for two. And then we're moving back in, holding dolphin, three deep breaths. Feeling free to pedal out any feet, rock side to side, these are your initials, two. And then make sure you're centered through the hips, come to the tippy toes, start to drop the knees, push into the hands, lift back up, send the weight forward, three breaths. Two breaths, and then one more time, starting to push it back. Notice if the palms of the hands started to pull in toward one another, if they have, can you start to turn the index fingers toward the front of the mat a little bit more, walk your elbows in, and then again, just feel your upper arm bones hug in. And then slowly come down onto your shins. Take it into a child's pose with the arms just back by the feet, and let the shoulders just roll forward and relax a little bit. Taking nice deep breaths all the way up into the back body and then as you exhale, releasing tension. Breathing here for another three. I'm just gonna mute everybody here, guys. Good, for two, awesome. 
All right, and then from there, you'll slowly start to come forward, tabletop, walk the hands a little further forward than normal, go into tabletop, and then lift the seat bones up and back, taking downward facing dog. So you can feel free to pedal out the feet here, rock the hips a little side to side, shake the head yes or no, move in any way that helps you to release tension, opens up the body, feels just generally good. Finding that action of rooting down through the hands that you had, even as you started to pull the weight forward, so really pressing down through the, the fingertips, especially. Feel your shoulders shrug up toward the ears a little bit here. And think about scrubbing the hands forward into the floor at the same time as you pull them in. And then from there, you'll slowly start to come forward, coming back into a tabletop. Inhale into a cow. And then as you exhale, start to lean the weight forward, keep the upper arm bones in, draw the chin and the chest as far forward to the floor as you can. And then as you exhale, start to push back up and round into a cat. So again, inhaling forward to a cow, exhaling to really extend as far forward as you can, shoulders away from ears. Inhale, push it all the way back up, straighten the elbows. And as you exhale, round back into cat. One more time, breathe in. Upper arm bones hug in, inner lines of hands down, lift back up, and then round. And then from there, back into a crouching tabletop, and no, we're not gonna go through that whole cycle of everything again. We're gonna take it back into a wide leg, or not a wide legged, just a forward fold at the back of your mat. So you can let this be easy, you can bring your arms into it if you like. It's just a moment to reset. Allow the hamstrings to open up for three, for two. And then you'll slowly, slowly, slowly start to walk yourself forward into a plank. And then from there, slowly start to lower all the way down to the floor. Extend both legs back behind you, lifting one and then the other. Upper arm bones hug in as you lift head, neck, and chest for baby cobra. And then as you exhale, slowly start to come back down. Push firmly into the hands, keep the upper arm bones pulling in, push back up, and move back to downward dog. This time you're going to look forward between the thumbs, bend your knees, step or lightly hop your feet forward to the top of the space. Then you'll breathe and lift the chest, and as you exhale, fold. Inhale, slowly start to lift both arms, look up between the palms. As you exhale, take your hands down to your heart. So sun salutation A, you'll inhale, lift the arms. And then as you exhale, slowly fold over the legs. Inhale, chest and gaze move forward. The vinyasa is yours if you're practicing floating or anything like that. Please continue with know, whatever seems to stick with you the most. And if it's all just not working, maybe just let it go for today. You know, when I started learning how to float, sometimes I was trying to muscle through it so much that I wasn't actually getting anywhere. Sometimes letting go is the answer. Look forward, bend the knees, step or lightly hop your feet forward, lift your chest forward on the inhale, and then as you exhale, fold over the legs, soften the backs of the knees, they don't need to be tight, inhale, lift both arms, exhale, hands at heart, and then again, breathe in, lift the arms up, and then exhale, fold, good, chest gaze forward, Vinyasa is yours. Take it at your own pace, ensuring that you're actually remaining present with each breath and with each pose, with each transition between each pose. Three more breaths here. Two. And then look forward, bend knees. Step or lightly hop the feet forward. Breathe and lift the chest. And then you'll exhale to fold. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, hands to heart. Last one, freestyle, all on your own. If you want to add a million chaturangas, I say go for it. I always give that option. Nobody ever takes it. Your call. Holding downward dog for five. Four. It's three. And that's two. Closing off the sun salutation, make your way back up to the top of the mat. Lift your heart. In pulse. Arms up. 
and then exhale, bring it down through center. Just take a moment, pausing, noticing the differences between how you, how you feel now and maybe at the beginning of class. And then from there, you'll lift both arms. Fold over the legs. Make your way back to a downward dog. Again, vinyasa is yours. The way you get back to downward dog depends on what you need from the practice at the moment. And then take just, take just a sigh when you land. You'll inhale, start to lift that right leg up. Now I want you to turn the right knee down, press down through the left heel, and see where you can lift that leg from the tush. And then from there, again, as much as you're sending the chest sort of forward in space and the hips back, can you contain through the rib basket? And then take that right foot forward in between the hands. Left knee is going to come down to the floor. You'll take one breath in, lift up, grab onto left wrist. As you exhale, start to side bend over toward the right, pressing left knee down, lifting left hip up. Inhale, slowly come back up. As you exhale, sit back toward the left heel, fold forward over the right leg, drawing the chest forward in space over the right leg to make sure you're actually feeling the maximum amount from your hamstring. Three breaths. That's two. Good, and then from there, set the right foot down, come off the left knee, turn the left foot way out, skandasana. Three deep breaths. Good. Two deep breaths. And then you slowly start to make your way forward top of mat again. You're going to turn onto the left toes, take the left knee down, step back into tabletop. Good. So hands are underneath of the shoulders. From there, just like you did in downward dog, can you take the right leg back without turning the right hip up, without crunching the left side in, keep both sides really nice and long, just the right leg lifts back. And then from there, you'll slowly start to hug the upper arm bones in. Just like you did through those cat cows, can you lower the chin and the chest to the floor, lift the right leg up as high as you can, and then slowly push back up and pull the right knee in. So two more like that. Extend, breathe in, lower, exhale, lift, inhale, pull in, exhale. One more time. Extend, inhale, lower, exhale, pause. Inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, pull the shoulders away from the floor. Inhale, push back up. Exhale, right knee in. Good. Stay with me. Come off the left knee. Right leg moves all the way back in six. From there, right foot forward between hands. Left heel plants to floor. Inhale through your warrior one. As you exhale, right hand comes down. Vinyasa is yours. If you want to work the handstands, the inversions, play around. And then you're back in downward dog. So I'll give it a few seconds for anyone who wanted to play around, anyone who needs to recover and breathe like I do. Three breaths. Two. All right, and then left leg starts to lift up. Opening the hip up here will give the left leg more height, not necessarily more space or more work. Okay, so starting to lift the left leg, left knee faces down. Exhale, left foot forward in between hands, right knee comes down. Start to stack the shoulders on top of the hips, really lift up first, and then as you exhale, root the right knee down as you stretch over toward the left, pull the left hip back in space. Inhale back through center as you exhale, hamstring stretch left side, Sitting back toward the left heel, but really drawing the chest forward in space. Breathing there for three. Two. All right, and then the left foot's going to come down. Come up off that right knee. Turn that right leg way, 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 way out. And then it's just a sort of rock between the two heels. One foot comes down, the other one comes up. You slowly start to sit. Watch the right knee wanting to collapse in toward the floor. It's cool to come up onto the tippy toes. Sometimes I like a skandasana on the tippy toes because it works the arches of my feet. And then you slowly start to walk forward. Right knee faces down, right knee comes down, table top. So we're back into some upper body work. So from that, Again, you root down through the right foot or the right shin, depending on how grounded you want to be here. For transition sake, though, the right toes under is easier. Left leg goes back, and then you try not to hike the left hip up, so it starts to look like this versus this. Take a deep breath in. Chin as far forward as possible. Push in your fingertips, feel the heels of your hands on the floor. Lift. 
round. Extend, breathe in. Slow, lower arm bones in, lower. Lift, back in. This time you pause when you come down. So extend, upper arm bones in, chest forward, push into the hands. Think about straightening your elbows to lift away from the floor. And then slowly round in. And then three-legged downward dog. Deep breath in. Exhale, left foot forward in between palms, right heel rolls down. Both arms lift up for your warrior one. Make the vinyasa yours. I'm going to take a little breather and a sip of water while you guys cycle back to downward dog. All right. And then from downward dog, I'm going to have you come forward into a plank. There are two ways. You can actually take your knees down while you watch this. There's two ways to go about this. So it's a tricep stretch or tricep work. So you can either from knees, one forearm and then the other forearm, and then lift, okay? Or, and then both down. So you'll notice in the plank, the hands actually need to be a little further forward. So the elbows come below the shoulders when you lower. So try for five of those. And the knees down is hard enough. The toes, it's an entirely ugh, different, oh man, monster. You really need to push the hands into the floor. Ugh. All right. Yoga grunts happen. Take it back. Take a child's pose. Roll out those wrists a little bit. Good. And then from there, tabletop. Move back through downward dog. And then look forward, bend knees. Step or lightly hop the feet to the top of your mat. Breathe in, lift the chest. And then as you exhale, forehead to shins. And as you inhale, lift arms. And as you exhale, take the hands to heart. All right, so you bend the knees, seat bones back, lift both arms. Exhale, fold. Forehead to shins. Keep cycling through. You can warrior one and then warrior two and then a little handstand if you like. So I'll actually work through those just for timing and cadence's sake. Exhaling open. Maybe you want to take a reverse. They're always fun. And then you cycle one down, then the other, walk back halfway, lift, and then make your way through. I'm gonna avoid a chaturanga today, <laughs> in between. And then left leg comes forward, right heel moves down. Lift both arms. Good, open it up. Reverse, feel your feet. One down, then the other. Now feel your hands, woof, and then back. <sighs> Yoga grunts are a real part of the process, so it doesn't sound quiet and nice and peaceful for ages. Take a deep breath in, let it aside, and then do that again. Deep breath in, big breath out, <sighs> one more time. And out. It's amazing how three heavy sides can bring you right back down. You'll lift your right leg up. Again, I want you to attempt to do this without opening up the hip. Now, start to come onto your left tippy toes. Can you lift the right leg a little higher? Start to gaze between your thumbs. Walk the chest forward over top of the thumbs. Can you start to bend the elbows, chest down, and push back up? Ooh, if you can't push back up, just take the leg down and reset. And then try one more time. Lower. And then really push into the arms. Straighten. Ooh, and all the way back. Holy cow. Right foot forward in between hands. Left foot can come in a little bit. Just your pyramid pose over top of the right leg. Very lightly uh, or very slightly drawing your tail to the left. One more deep breath in. And then out. 
And then you'll slowly start to walk the hands toward the left. Turn most of the toes toward the left. Walk the heels into the same line. So same line across. Inhale, lift the chest as you exhale. Start to fold over the legs. There's a lot of flexion through the arms today. So let's find a little extension. Take your hands together behind the back. Just let the front of your chest stretch a little bit more. Breathing there for three, really letting go of the head. Notice if all the weight is back in your heels, send some forward to the toes, lift the inner arches. Two. Good, and then slowly start to take those hands back down. Walk your hands back up toward the top of your mat. Take the left knee down, and then from there, you're gonna start to take the right knee back. You're gonna come back toward um, a tabletop, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the chin stand. The chin stand helps me figure out all the other arm balances. So there's, there's a school of thought as to whether to teach it or not because it does come slightly forward onto your chin, obviously, and your neck. So just be really, really wary of where you are. I feel like when we're not in a group class setting, we're actually a little safer because <laughs> we're not trying to prove anything to anybody. So that being said, you're going to be in a tabletop. And we've been through all of this stuff already. Left toes tuck under. I'll show you first. Right leg goes back. We remember arm bones hugging in and chest forward. Do we remember lifting this leg? Could we maybe lift this leg and maybe hop a couple times? Upper arm bones in and then eventually, or whenever you need it. Sit back, take a little child's pose. Rock it out a little side to side. Cool. Hope that landed. If it didn't, don't worry about it. Just keep working on it. Take it back down. We're done. All right. Look forward in between your hands. Bend your knees. Step or hop your feet to the top of your mat. Inhale, lift the chest and exhale, fold. Let's bend the knees, seat bones, back lift arms. And then exhale. Samasthiti. All right. Bend the knees, seat bones, back lift the arms. Exhale, fold over the legs. Chest knees move forward as you exhale, hands press down, make your way through. The vinyasa is always yours. And then that left leg starts to move up and back. Let's take left foot forward between hands, right heel down, lift both arms, exhale, open two. Find your reverse. One hand down, then the other. Maybe left foot back a little bit, maybe a little hop up. Hug the upper arm bones in here as well. And then make your way back to downward dog. And then right leg will go up. Right foot will step forward. Left heel rolls down. Lift the arms. Open to two. Reverse. And then your call. You can either hop up. Lifting up involves keeping the hands and the foot really close, I find, so that I can tip forward. For some, it's actually a little further back so they can tip forward. And it's the same action that you did when you were in plank, looking over top of the leg or, or over top of the hands. All right, back to downward dog for three. For two. Awesome, look forward between hands, bend knees, step our hot feet, top of the mat, breathe in chest lifts, then you fold, bend the knees, seat bones back, arms lift, and we close. All right, bend in the knees, lift the arms, then fold. Cycle to downward dog, your way, moving with intention and awareness, and then left legs moving up and back. And again, so I wasn't paying attention. I tend to like to open the head. There it goes, it's back to it. Come up onto the right toes, lift that left leg. So keep that action through the left touch. Start to come forward. This is handstand. What you're doing here is a handstand. Pushing into the floor, lifting the chest. Now chin, chin forward, elbows in, lower, and push, 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 push. Okay, just one more, because that's really hard. Forward. Elbows in, chin forward. Straighten through those elbows. And then back. Left foot forward in between hands. Right foot comes forward. Pyramid. 
over the left leg. A chance to catch your breath. A chance for me to catch my breath <laughs> for another three. It's hard to catch your breath in yoga sometimes when you're actually doing the breathing, let alone when you have to talk. Same time. All right, walk the hands to the right. Turn both sets of toes to the right. Make sure your heels are at about the same line. Then fold over the legs, opposite them on top. And just stretch out through the chest there. Breathing for three. Slowly start to take the hands down. Walk the hands back up toward the top of your mat. From there, the right knee will come down. The left leg pulls all the way back. And then it's upper arm bones hugging in. You've kind of been here, chin forward. Maybe you lift, maybe you take a couple hops. You really need to find the action of the hands pushing into the floor to extend the chin forward. And then afterward, Take a little child's pose for four, three, and two. All right, so slowly just start to roll up until you're seated on the heels. Take the arms out to the sides, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, take your right elbow underneath of your left elbow. Inhale, lift the chest. And then as you exhale, try not to actually hinge at the hip, just round through the spine. So I really like to think about pushing my seat bones forward into my heels here, navel back, knees down, and it gives you a really great stretch for the front of the legs. Inhale, lift the arms back up. Exhale, take them out to the sides. Take a deep breath in. Left elbow under right. Elbows lift, breathe in, tailbone back. And then tailbone starts to push, 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 push into the heels, the knees press down, press down into even your toenails. Three breaths. Two. And to slowly start to make your way back up. Unwind the arms, take the hands forward. Seat bones up and back for downward dog and then walking the hands back toward the feet. Padahastasana or Padangushtasana, depending on um, the openness of the back of your legs, really. It's a little shallower here than it is here. Padangushtasana is one of the postures on your way to Padahastasana. Things to be aware of in these forward folds. The feet. Press down through the whole foot, not just the heel, the ball of the foot, the baby toe, the big toe, the whole thing. And then the hands actually pull back up into the feet. And this is what helps draw your chest forward down your shins. And then that last thing, where are your shoulders? We tend to pop them right up toward our ears. And then slowly take the hands out from underneath of the feet or take the hands off the feet. Walk the hands forward, back into plank. We're gonna do five more of these guys. So you're gonna walk your hands forward, feel the upper arm bones hug in, the chest be forward, the heels press back if you're on your toes, and then lower, one, lower, two. And if you find you always lift off one, try to lift off the other, three. Four. Oh, five. Beast. Okay. Knees come down. Sit back to the heels for a moment. Just shake out the wrists. And then we'll come back to downward dog. Right leg moving up and back. As you exhale, the right foot will come forward. Left foot stays on the floor. Outer edges of the feet or twisted lunge your call. Just make sure that left upper arm bone is rotating toward the outer edge of your mat. So out toward the outer edge of your mat. And then you slowly start to walk, pivot on the feet. Skandasana, left side. Three deep breaths. Two. Awesome. Slowly start to walk the hands forward, back up toward the top of the mat. 
Stay with me here. You're going to step the right foot back to meet the left foot. You want to keep the downward dog a little shorter. All right. These are a few spaces we've been. Forearms come down. We've done this. Push the chest up. This might be it. This might be it. Not sure. And then from there, it's kind of the same thing. You find your touch. And then just like the chin stand, it's just a little different. You take it forward onto the forearms instead. If you find it up on the forearms, what you want to think about is the shoulders shrugging up toward the ears to find more lift. And then eventually, you're going to take, I suppose it's the left foot back down. I kicked up with the right one. And can you lift back up onto the hands? Oh, good job. <laughs> right knee forward behind right wrist. It is time for a pigeon, my dears. Inhale, lift your chest. And then as you exhale, let's start to fold over the right leg. Breathing there for five. Right hip just gently pulling back for four. Three. If you're feeling anything around the knee, a flex through the ankle can sometimes make that sensation move down to the hip where it's supposed to be. If it's just too much, come on to your back. Good, and then slowly from there, you'll start to make your way back up. Take the right hand down beside the right waist, just roll off that right side. Take the left leg forward in space. I'm gonna do um, lotus leg here. If, however, you're taking the lotus leg and your right knee is sitting way up here, please don't fold forward. If you're gonna fold forward, put your right foot inside the left side instead and then fold forward. If, however, you're in lotus, the knee is angling toward the floor, then go ahead, fold forward. And then you might, you'll take that right hand out, you turn the right thumb down, bend the right elbow, grab the toe. This would be an open twist. This is a forward fold. You wanna keep it a forward fold. Three deep breaths. Two. All right, so you slowly start to come back up. I'm going to see how this transition works or if it will. If you've got Lotus, bend the left knee. You start to take the weight forward. Your right upper arm wraps onto the right shin and you roll up. And then you can take the left leg back. You can vinyasa through, step back. I mean, you kind of got to play around with it on your own and figure it out. All right, so deep breath in. Nice breath out. And then the left leg will move up and back. As you exhale, left foot steps forward in between hands. It's either outer edges of the feet or twisted lunge, whatever you did on the other side. Just make sure this right shoulder is not collapsing in. This right upper arm bone needs to turn out so that the right shoulder blade can plant on the back of the rib cage. You can find more lift there. And then you slowly turn, 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 turn. Skandasana through the right. Three breaths. Two. Awesome. Slowly start to walk it forward. We've been here. Left leg steps back to meet right. A little bit shorter for the downward dog. Just creates a little more space for you to actually be able to stack. And then the forearms come down. And the, the knees might need to really bend. Like it might look like a little teeny malasana almost here and then the hips need to lift as much as you can possibly do that so if that's knees bent who cares hips up doesn't matter how long the legs are and then you use the touch like really find extension and honestly one day it's I'm not even kicking up off this back foot it's sort of just sliding out behind me and I'm sinking into my shoulders right now can I find the shoulders shrugging up toward the ears to get a little bit more lift You'll see even my toes are reaching up toward the ceiling at this point, creating less weight on my arms. Come out when you're ready. Child's pose it out. Let the cardiovascular system just sort of go like, oh my God, I'm right side up again. For four. For three. Two. 
two. And then you'll just slowly start to come forward. Left leg up and back. Left knee comes forward behind that left wrist. Find your pigeon pose on the left side, whether that means you want to remain upright and move it into a back bend or fold forward and keep it a little more sleepy. Tune into what you need. Respond. That, that is the sign of an advanced yoga practice, not whether or not you can hold pincha for five minutes. You know, pinch it for five minutes and be completely unaware the whole time you are, and it might not be serving you in any sort of way except your ego. Not really the greatest space. Slowly start to come back up. Left hip will just fall to the floor, gravity's this great little force, knocks you right over. Right foot comes forward. It's either Janus, so the left foot inside, and you fold forward, or if your knees are amenable to Lotus. If you want to talk about how to get into lotus, the easiest way to avoid knee pain in lotus, hinge the knee completely, lock it in there. And then as you start to move into it, feel the rotation and the adduction come from the hip. And then you start to pull the thigh bone back in. That's how I find I get the least knee pain. Left hand can move out to the side. You go back, turn thumb down, reach, 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 bend, bend, bend. Maybe you grab the toe. Maybe your hands are just on your clothes on the outer edge of your right side. That works too, as long as you can find something that you can actively hold on to. And think about pulling the shoulder blade back as you reach your chest forward. So many things to think about. Kind of the point. Slowly start to drop back up. Now again, this transition requires that you be able to fold into some pretty tiny little balls. So that, that right leg comes underneath and you kind of like, as you're moving into it, you come onto the right shin. But as you're doing that, you hook that left shin underneath of the left arm, like as high up to the armpit as you possibly can, because that creates this little shelf that you can push into, lift off of, and then back. Maybe, <laughs> over time, or maybe you fell on your face and it's part of the learning for the, the learning curve, eh, whatever. Move it in the right direction if you fell on your face. Okay, so look forward between the hands, bend the knees, step or lightly, hop, fork, top. Lift your chest, fold over the legs, lift the arms, and hands to heart. All right, one more story B before we wrap it to the floor. Slowly start to fold. You can get your hands, stands back in if you like. I'm actually, do I have any, am I watching anybody here? Can I see anybody's vinyasas? No, you guys are all off. So I'll just, you know, flow through it too. I'll meet you back in downward dog. Okay. Downward dog for another three. Another two. Let's try to break down the actual uh, hop forward. So it's the same kind of thing. You start to shift the weight on top of the hands, push your chest away from the floor, and then keep your hips up as high as you can as you start to walk in onto your tippy toes. Cross one ankle over the other, it does not matter which. And then you start to send the chest forward. As your knees pull through, you lift and then ouch, I got a little cramp. Then you lower, <laughs> take the soles of the feet together. The knees will just move out to opposite sides. Interlace the hands below the baby toes, inhale, lift the chest. And as you exhale, elbows can press out into thighs as long as shoulders don't bunch up toward ears. Five breaths here. slowly start to come back up. Pull the knees in toward one another. Sit directly up onto your seat bones. Try not to rock too, too far back to the tailbone. We tend to rock a little too far back in boats and kind of hang out on the tailbone. Can you see where you can shift it forward onto the seat bones so there's just that little bit of like, think about what this pose is called. 
When does a boat ever just sit on the water? Never. Oh, motion in the ocean. Find that little space where it doesn't feel so safe. Uh, not safe. Safe's the wrong word. Steady. All right. Cross one angle over top of the other. Oh, take the hands outside the bum. Lift the bum first. Lift the chest. Can you lift the feet? Tap the heels. Back down. Boat. One. Two. Three. Okay, call it four or five. Cross the ankles. Press in. Lift the bum. Lift the chest. Lift the feet. Tap, tap. Back down. One more. One. Two. <laughs> Lock the bit a little bit. Three. Four. Hands down. So you'll see my hands reach quite far forward. My feet tap. I lift. I lift. I lift. Tap, tap. Oh, lower. <laughs> Roll down onto your back. Let's pull the knees in toward the chest. Make some circles of the thigh bones within those hip sockets. Let's give the hip flexors a stretch. Yes. Set the feet down onto the floor. Um, from there, make sure your heels, you can about graze them with your fingertips. Just want them, don't want them too far forward. Hands by the sides, palms down if you like. You start to lift. You can keep the hands right here. Start to roll the shoulder blades underneath of you. Maybe then the upper arm bones. So see where you can press down through the inner lines of the feet. We tend to forget about those. I like to lift my big toes up personally. I find I get more action through the backs of my legs. Can you keep the hips up and start to reach the arms all the way up overhead? Now from there, start to take the arms up to, whoops, good thing there's a lid on that. Take the arms up to the sides. And then start to bend your elbows and draw the hands in beside the ears. Try to keep the elbows pressing in toward one another. Press into the hands, maybe to the top of the feet. Maybe pushing all the way up to wheel, holding here five. Press down through the heels, pull the low belly back toward the spine. It actually pulls your organs back onto your low spine and can, keeps you from compressing the area. All right, and then to come down, it can be a little scary, but you want to start to bend the elbows, top of the head back toward the floor, elbows in, tuck, down, and then hips down. And I'm just going to have you take one deep breath in, another deep breath out. And then you're going to come back up, either stay restorative bridge for the next two, or stay bridge for five, or wheel, four. Now if you're in wheel doing another wheel, you're going to transition to the head and move back up. Three. So I'll demo that. Two. Elbows in, just like chaturanga. Fingertips down. You come down. You lift back up. For another three. Two, slowly lower down, weight in feet as you tuck chin, bring it all down before you move the knees in. Just let the spine settle. A deep breath in, and a deep breath out. And then you'll slowly Pull the knees into the chest, rock up and down the mat two or three times. We're rocking up to a seat and knee forward fold that feels good for you. I mean, traditionally, Paschimottanasana is a hinge at the hips and a slight extension through the upper spine, neck long. But if you wanted to slightly flex the upper spine because it feels good, I'm not going to tell you that that's not something you should do. Why not? The human spine was meant to do this every once in a while. Work in that space. If it feels good to only flex the spine and not the hips, do it. Be intuitive. Do what feels best for your body because you're the one living in it. And you're the one who's going to have to live in it forever. You slowly start to come back up. Now from here, you can either roll back onto the back and take your shoulder stand series, or you can roll up over top. You could try to work on chin stands if you like. Um, pincha if you like, handstands, headstands, whatever you like there. 
I'm going to go through the shoulder stance series for those who may not have that sort of inversion practice yet. So if you're doing anything else, go ahead, go play on your own. But if you're coming through more of a shoulder stand series, hands down on the floor, push into the hands quite a lot. Start to straighten the legs so the tailbone starts to come up and then lift as much as you can. After that, grab on with your hands, bend your knees quite a lot and see where you can start to roll yourself up. Trust that you won't roll all the way over top. You won't. Take your hands to the low back, fingertips point up. Can you see where you can lift even higher to eventually get the hands through the mid back and not the bum? And then eventually, legs lift. There will be a little crease at the hips to start. You slowly start to work that out. Turn the knees so that they face straight back. Another three breaths, press into your elbows, and especially the pinky side edge of your hands. And then slowly plow pose. Good, so the hips press forward back into my hands, the hip crease does the legs lowering, and then my spine lengthens again. Doesn't start to curl back in, not yet anyway. You can start to reach the arms forward, interlacing the hands, taking pinky fingers down, opens the chest. And then maybe knees down. Slowly roll out. Those who took the other inversions, please take a child's pose. Let the cardiovascular system calm down before you start to flip over. And then you're back down on your back. Meeting the rest of us here. And then we'll slowly move in through fish posture. If uh, we did a little lotus today, so if you wanted to move through this in lotus, that is absolutely your choice. So with fish and lotus, I find like my low back really starts to lift off the floor. So you might have to like sort of wiggle your way into it. Forearms press down. So I actually like to just balance into my elbows. Head back and I'm one of those ones who needs to walk. The tush back. And then my yoga bun always seems to be a little bit of a pillow here for me. So you can start to reach the arms out for another three, two, and then maybe starting to reach out arms and legs. Three deep breaths. Two deep breaths. Pressing into the elbows, lifting up, tucking the chin, pulling it in. Gentle rocks from side to side. And then take the arms out to the sides in whatever way you like. Um, I did do a lot of outer hip stretching today. So let's take a root, a bound root twist. So as much as you can think eagle legs. So this is cow face legs where um, the thigh bones are externally rotating away from one another. Eagle legs involves them internally rotating toward one another, so the feet come quite close. Set the left foot down onto the floor. Move the hips over to the right. Take both knees down to the left. Trying to keep that right foot tucked underneath of that left shin. And then allowing the right knee to be very, very heavy, and then starting to pull back on the right hip. Breathing for four, three, two. Good stuff. Slowly come back up through center. Shift the hips back into the middle of the mat if they got skewed. Unwind the legs. You can shake it out a little bit. Left leg over right. So again, differences. Cow face and eagle are different. Cow face is external rotation, eagle, internal rotation. So when you actually know the difference, you can intentionally move a little bit more. Right foot comes down, left foot over to the side. Both knees down. We're gonna draw that left knee down onto the floor as you gently tug back on the left hip, pulling back on the low belly. Oh, breathing there. Three breaths. Amazing, guys. Come back up through center. Bring the hips back into the middle of the mat. Unwind the legs. Let's 
pull the forehead up toward the knees and curl into a tiny, tiny, tiny little ball. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. And then as you exhale, come down into Shavasana. Lift your shoulders up off the floor and then plant them back down. Let your collarbones feel naturally broad. And let the palms face up toward the ceiling with those fingertips just gently curling in. Take your feet comfortably wide. Allow the leg bones to roll out within the hip sockets so the baby toes fall down toward the floor a little. Allowing everything to just feel heavy toward the floor, allowing everything to sink in and integrate. And as much as possible, trying to stay connected to the body and the breath and resist all temptation from the thinking mind to become active. moments when you find yourself lost in the thinking mind, that's where you bring it back to your breath. Let your breath bring you back into your body. Until inevitably, we end up lost again. But we also keep in mind that this is the human condition. This is the way the human mind is programmed to work. And then in that simple moment of catching ourselves lost in thought, we practiced getting out of that. Out of that cycle. Out of being lost and being instead aware. really slowly start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes and deepen your breathing start to explore the spaces that feel open and strong the spaces that are a little tighter a little sore also sending some breath into those spaces we neglect either way and then slowly just turn to one side or you'll rock up to a seat. And uh, we'll take the hands together, just in front of the heart. Just bow the forehead lightly toward the fingertips. Spend a few moments seated, tall. The light engagement of Mula Banda, Uddiyana Banda, pulling the ears back in line with the shoulders to find Jala, Jala Dara Banda a little bit more, lining up all the energetic through energetic centers through the spine, the neck, and the head. And then we'll bow the forehead just slightly toward the fingertips, giving yourselves a moment of silent gratitude for stepping onto the mat this morning in this heat. Sending out some silent gratitude to the practice for what it is and the ways in which it supports us and nourishes us. And a final moment of gratitude for me for being here. Thank you so much, guys. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.
It's a good work, guys. If you do have any questions about um, anything yoga related, you can follow me over on um, Anshans underscore yoga. And I'll answer any questions you have. If you have any requests or anything like that, you can also just let me know, okay? So have a great rest of the day, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys Monday, okay? Have a good one. You're welcome. Okay, guys. I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry, I was uh, I was on a Zoom call and I was just live stream live streaming this. Um, so if any of that did happen to like land for you and you liked it, um, you can send donations over um, on my on my website. There's a support tab there. Um, so there's there's pay what you can options over there. Um, there's also good old email money transfers. My email is a m o r l e y nine at gmail dot com and uh, yeah. If you, no problem. If you have uh, any questions or anything like that, feel free to just private message me on uh, IG. And if you've got any requests for classes moving forward, I mean, let me know. I'm around. I'm about to head out to send myself and my niece to the pond all day because it's like too hot to exist. Have a great day. Bye.